So recently I posted a video about how to connect your PS5 controller or any Bluetooth controller to your Retro Pocket 3 Plus and then connect your Retro Pocket 3 Plus to a TV so you can basically treat it like a home retro gaming console. I'll link that video in the description. A couple of you asked me, well, can you connect multiple controllers to your Retro Pocket 3 Plus so you can play multiplayer on it? And I thought to myself, yeah, I bet you could. And also, why didn't I think of that? If you love retro video games, partly due to nostalgia, which I'm sure a lot of you do, you probably have a lot of fond memories of playing multiplayer as a kid. I mean, I remember playing games like GoldenEye, Super Smash Bros, Mario Golf, Mario Tennis, Mario Kart 64. I mean, I have so many good memories of playing Mario Kart 64, booting it up and yelling at my friends when they hit me with that red shell. Anyway, and there's also those couch co-op games like Contra 3 and Super Contra, which is like mindlessly difficult, but it's so much fun. Anyway, who doesn't want to recreate those nostalgic multiplayer memories of the past? Now in this video, I'm going to go over whether or not you can plug in multiple Bluetooth controllers to your Retro Pocket 3 Plus so that you can play local multiplayer on it. Now let's get right into the video. If you don't know how to connect a Bluetooth based controller, such as a PS5 controller or your Xbox Series controller, to your Retroid Pocket 3 Plus, don't worry, it's really simple. First, go to Settings in your Retroid Pocket 3 Plus. Then, click Connected Devices, Pair New Device, then grab your PS5 controller or Xbox controller. In this example will do a PS5 controller. Click on the Home button followed by the Share button. This will put the controller into pairing mode. Then you'll see a pop-up in your Retroid Pocket 3 Plus. Click pair and boom, you got a controller connected. But of course, if we're gonna wanna play multiplayer, we're gonna need to connect more than one controller. So grab your second controller and go through the same exact steps as above and voila, now you have two controllers connected to your Retroid Pocket 3 Plus. And as you can see, I'm moving the menu around with both controllers. But the important question is, can we play multiplayer? Before I get into explaining how the multiplayer works and all, let me first explain what setup I'm using. Because as you're probably aware, there are multiple emulators for each console. In this video, I'm gonna be testing multiplayer using RetroArch and the cores within RetroArch. For those of you that don't know, the cores in RetroArch are basically emulators. Now, why am I doing this? Well, honestly, because it's the easiest setup process in my opinion. When you try emulating more demanding systems though, like DS, 3DS, GameCube, PS2, RetroArch definitely starts to struggle, and unfortunately there aren't many customization options to try to get better performance. Those more powerful systems require standalone emulators and some tinkering in the settings. However, for the sake of this video, we're only testing multiplayer for consoles up to N64, so it won't be an issue. All right. So we've gone over how to connect multiple Bluetooth controllers to your Retro Pocket 3 Plus. Now I'm going to explain how to set up multiplayer using RetroArch. I'm going to explain this process step by step because trust me, it's more complicated than it needs to be. And there really isn't a user manual out there on setting this up. You're essentially forced to figure it out via trial and error. But don't worry, it's simple once you know the steps. And if you prefer a written step by step guide, I'll make sure to link to the blog post on this topic in the description below. Step one, using your player one controller, click on RetroArch in the, Re in the Retroid Pocket 3 Plus home screen. Step two, select the core that you'll be using. This is the emulator. In this example, we'll be using Parallel for the N64. Step three, go to the settings tab and click on input. Step four, click on port one input and make sure that your first controller is showing up on their device index. You can see here that my DualSense controller is popping up. Step five, back up and go to the port two controller. At this point, you'll probably notice that the device index will show up as either the first controller or no controller at all, and that's fine. Click the action button on your second controller. In this case, it's the X button on my PS5 DualSense controller. Either nothing will happen or you'll see that the second controller will pop up under device index. Either way, the system will now register that there is a second controller. This is really important. If the device index didn't change, 
click on the device index with your first controller. This is the primary controller. Now you'll see that there's two options for your Bluetooth controllers. Click on the second controller. Step six, if you're connecting a third controller, go to port three controls. Again, device index will show up as either the first controller or no controller. Click the action button on the third controller. And again, either nothing will change or the third controller will pop up. But either way, the system will register that there's a third controller available. Using your first controller, the primary one, click on device index and select the third controller. Now, if you want to add a fourth player, you do the exact same thing, but with port four. Final step, go to your game favorites or recent history and select the game you want to start playing. And boom, you are now playing with multiple players. A quick note, I don't add games directly to RetroArch. I have all my games listed in the Retroid uh, Pocket Launcher, and I select the game through that. It then boots it up through RetroArch, and now that game appears in my recent history in RetroArch, which I can then favorite if I want to. Now, if you uh, haven't set this up yet, I'd recommend looking up a guy like Retro Game Corp's guide on setting up the Retro Pocket 3 Plus, and he'll explain how the Retroid Launcher works. All right, so we talked about how to set up local multiplayer on your Retro Pocket 3 Plus, but the question is, is the multiplayer experience actually good? So my wife agreed to play some retro multiplayer games with me, which is pretty cool. And we booted up Super Contra, Contra 3, and Mario Kart 64 to test it out. As I mentioned earlier, the setup process for getting the controllers to actually connect so you can play multiplayer is kind of annoying, but honestly, what can you expect from playing with an emulator? Once you get past that process though, the gameplay itself is really smooth, and to me, it just felt like playing on the original hardware with, you know, modern controllers, of course. Now, we had a blast playing the games that we tested out, and I suspect that we're gonna be playing some more soon. The longer I own the Retro Pocket 3 Plus, the more features I'm discovering about this console that I'm really enjoying. I mean, like the fact that you can connect multiple controllers to this device and then plug it into a TV so you can play local multiplayer with your friends is pretty darn cool. Now, I'm curious, if you're buying the Retro Pocket 3 Plus or you already own one and you wanna take advantage of this feature, let me know in the comments below. Anyway, that's it for this video. Thanks so much for watching and happy gaming.